Hi, and welcome back. So if you've followed the channel for any length of time, you'll know I'm a big fan of coffee and its health benefits and benefits for longevity. A new study at the University of California has used ECG devices, glucose monitors, and Fitbits to check caffeinated coffee's effects on premature ventricular contractions. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and see what this new study out of the University of California has got to offer. This is a review of a 14-day study that was written by the American Heart Association but was conducted at the University of California, San Francisco, where they looked into caffeinated coffee's negative effect on premature ventricular contractions and its positive effect on step count. And there's a link in the description below to the American Heart Association's website. According to the American Heart Association, drinking caffeinated coffee appears to have both beneficial and harmful short-term health effects. On the negative side, effects such as increased abnormal heartbeats and a reduced sleep duration. But on the positive side, effects such as increased physical activity and a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. My comment here is that now having reviewed a number of studies looking into the effects of coffee and caffeine, I have to say the results are sometimes contradictory and can be biased depending on the organization who are actually putting them forward. Study author Gregory Marcus, MD, Associate Chief of Cardiology for Research and Endowed Professor of Arterial Fibrillation Research at the University of California, San Francisco said, Coffee is the most commonly consumed beverage in the world, yet its health effects remain uncertain. While the majority of long-term observational studies have suggested multiple potential benefits for drinking coffee, this is the first randomized trial to investigate the real-time physiological consequences of coffee consumption. Dr. Marcus and his colleagues enrolled 100 adult volunteers and they were assigned to wear the following ECG devices to continuously track and record their heart rhythms, Fitbits that were used to track their physical activity and their sleep patterns, as well as glucose monitors to continuously track blood sugar levels for two weeks. Let's take a quick look at the cohort. The participants were an average age of 38, 51% of them were women and 48% of them were white. Researchers also obtained DNA saliva samples from the participants to assess genetic variants that may affect caffeine metabolism. Not much information here, I know. I did try to find out more, but the real detail on this trial doesn't seem to be posted anywhere online. If someone does have a link to more information, I'd be interested to look at that, so please leave a link in the comments below. Let's now take a look at the study protocol. The cohorts were randomly assigned to either avoid or consume coffee for no more than two consecutive days in a row. They all had to do this for 14 consecutive days. Coffee and espresso consumption were recorded in real time via the timestamp button on their ECG monitor. Researchers tracked their trips to coffee shops with geo-tracking. In addition, participants completed daily questionnaires to detail how much coffee they consumed every morning. Moving on, let's take a look at the results. Analysis of the data found that coffee consumption was associated with a 54% increase in premature ventricular contraction. This is a type of abnormal heartbeat originating in the lower chambers of the heart and often reported a feel like a skipped heartbeat. In contrast, drinking more coffee was associated with fewer episodes of supraventricular tachycardia, an abnormally rapid heart rhythm arising from the upper chambers of the heart. My comment here, I'd like to know what the percentage of the lower episodes actually was. Was it greater than 51%? Strange, the American Heart Association would choose to present the data in this way and not present a lot more data with regard to the results. Any idea why they chose to do it this way? Now, a 54% increase in premature ventricular contractions, or PVCs, does sound extremely worrying. But in a previous study, Dr. Gregory Marcus is on record for saying, with regard to coffee consumption and PVCs, 
PBCs are common and are usually regarded as harmless. We all have them once in a while and generally they're considered benign. But we and others have shown that more PBCs are an independent risk factor for heart failure over time. Not everyone with more PBCs has heart failure, but it is a factor. Let's move on to the sleep and activity element of the study. Consuming coffee was consistently associated with more physical activity as well as less sleep. Specifically, participants who consume coffee log more than a thousand additional steps per day compared to the days when they did not drink coffee. On the days that participants drank coffee, they had 36 fewer minutes of sleep per night according to their Fitbit devices. Drinking more than one coffee per day more than doubled the number of irregular heartbeats arising from the heart's lower chambers. My comment here, what was the number or percentage and was it statistically significant? Each additional cup of coffee consumed was associated with nearly 600 more steps per day and 18 fewer minutes of sleep per night. There were no differences in continuously recorded glucose measurements when the study participants consumed versus avoided coffee. My comment here, did they drink Americano or did they drink coffee with milk and sugar because that would have made quite a difference. Dr. Marcus stated, more physical activity, which appears to be prompted by coffee consumption, has numerous health benefits, such as reduced risks of type 2 diabetes and several cancers, and is associated with greater longevity. On the other hand, reduced sleep is also associated with a variety of adverse psychiatric, neurological and cardiovascular outcomes. More frequent abnormal heartbeats from the upper chambers influence risk of arterial fibrillation and more frequent abnormal heartbeats from the lower chambers or ventricles increase the risk of heart failure. These results highlight the complex relationship between coffee and health. The study participants with genetic variations associated with a faster caffeine metabolism exhibited more abnormal heartbeats originating in the ventricles and this was when more caffeinated coffee was consumed. The slower an individual metabolized caffeine based on their genetics, the more sleep they lost when they drank caffeinated coffee. The investigators also sought to determine if changes in exercise or sleep influence coffee's effects on abnormal heart rhythms and no such association was identified. Dr. Marcus noted that because coffee was randomly assigned to the study participants, cause and effect can be inferred. These observations were made during repeated assessments of days when coffee was consumed versus when it was not for each study participants, eliminating concerns regarding differences in individual level characteristics as an explanation for these results. Now I've scoured the internet to find the actual study paper so I can see how many cups of coffee, the size of cup and the types of coffee, etc. that were used, but I can't seem to find that study paper anywhere. If you do come across a link, please post it in the comments below. Now 100 participants is a good sample size, but it was only over two weeks. A previous study I covered followed 382,535 participants for over 10 years. The results of that study was that having two or three cups of coffee a day was associated with the greatest benefit, translating to a 10 to 15% lower risk of developing coronary heart disease, heart failure, a heart rhythm problem, or dying from any reason. The researchers did observe a U-shaped relationship with coffee intake and new heart rhythm problems. The maximum benefit was seen amongst people who drank two to three cups of coffee per day. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, in my humble opinion, not really a lot in this study. It's the shortest study with the least amount of cohorts and not really any data on the protocol, apart from to avoid or consume coffee for no more than two consecutive days for 14 consecutive days. And that's all there is. Nothing about how many cups to strength of the coffee. In a previous study that I covered, um, they split the cohort down into six separate groups, depending on how much coffee they drank per day so they could get more accurate reflection on coffee's effect on their health. This piece by the American Heart Association highlights 54% as an increase in PBCs, 
But then Dr. Gregory is quoted as saying a while ago in another one that PVCs are common and are usually regarded as harmless. We all have them once in a while and generally they're considered benign. Not everyone with more PVCs has heart failure, but it is a factor. So unless I come across the data for the study, which gives me more information, uh, and if someone can post a link, that would be great. I'm probably going to ignore most of the information from this study. I'm going to carry on drinking three to five cups of coffee a day, caffeinated before midday. And then afternoon, I'm probably going to carry on with a two or three cups of decaf coffee uh, as part of my longevity regime.